To start this off, just a little bit of information for you. Bungie is changing up the way crafting weapons works in the game once the next season drops. You know, all those different types of elements and everything. Yeah, they're gone. So it's going to be neutral element all day, baby. Anyways, my name is Sentinel Gray and welcome to class. So in case you haven't noticed, which I don't know how you wouldn't have, but Bungie has added weapon crafting to Destiny with the launch of Witch Queen. Because of that, we can now craft god roll weapons as long as we put in the work to get them where they need to be. I won't be going over how weapon crafting works because I already did a video on that and you can watch that somewhere down in the description below where I'll have a tag on the top of the video, something. I'll, I'll, I'll link you to it, don't worry about it. But what I will be going over is what I feel are five extremely good PVE weapons you can craft right now. And with those five weapons, you'll be able to make a full loadout to use in all levels of difficulty content. So strap in. I wanna put this out there too. Those of you who have been playing Destiny for years may already have weapons that far surpass anything in this video. Hell, you might have those weapons that you've been using for the past year with 10,000 plus kills on it that you've had masterworked ever since it dropped for you. That's great. I do too. But these weapons you can craft, and for a lot of players either returning to the game or brand new, they don't have the things that you and I do, so keep that in mind as you watch this video. The first weapon I want to talk about can be an absolute workhorse of a weapon for your everyday use. However, it might be able to work in high level content too, like Masters and Grandmasters. Sweet Sorrow is a 720 RPM rapid fire frame auto rifle that can mow down practically anything you put in front of it. To add to its high fire rate, it also has the intrinsic effect that whenever the magazine is empty, the weapon reloads faster. Taking all of this into account, there is one role that I think you're going to want to craft. In order, for the first column, you're going to want Extended Barrel. For the second column, you're going to want Tactical Mag. For the third column, you're going to want Stats for All. For the fourth column, it's going to be One for All. And for the Masterwork, it is up to you in either Range or Stability. Now here's why. Extended Barrel is a trait that gives your weapon bonus range so it can deal damage a little bit further away, but the big thing here is the recoil control you get from this barrel type as well. Since this is one of the highest firing rate auto rifles in the game, it'll pay off to have some recoil control, especially if you're on controller instead of mouse and keyboard. Tactical Mag will help raise your stability, reload speed, and magazine size so it's a bit easier to slay out in general. Stats for All isn't only huge for the gun itself, but can also make this weapon specifically into a laser. Stats for All increases your range, stability, handling, and reload speed all by 30 points for just tapping three separate targets. And for a weapon that spits bullets out so quickly, it's a very easy thing to achieve. One for All is the damage perk version of Stats for All, so hitting three separate targets gives your weapon a 30% damage increase for as long as the perk is activated. For the frame, quote unquote, or better known as the masterwork, you're going to want to lean into whatever you feel is necessary for you. Think the gun needs more stability? Put a stability masterwork on it. Can you control the recoil really well, but the range you wish was a little better? Slap a range masterwork on it. That part of the gun is completely up to you. Finally, one of the new origin traits, Land Tank, is a trait that rolls on every weapon from the Season of the Risen and can be incredibly useful on a weapon like Sweet Sorrow. With Land Tank, your resilience and damage reduction is increased for each kill you get with the weapon for up to a max stack of three. Currently, as of me making this video, you receive 5 resilience and a 5% damage reduction per stack of land tank. Now the thing about this is that no matter whether you play on controller or mouse and keyboard, this auto rifle should work extremely well for you and shouldn't take too much effort in controlling its recoil. I know that type of thing is far easier for MK players than it is for some controller players, but making this role for Sweet Sorrow should be able to put in work for you no matter what you use to play the game. The next one is a weapon purely for high level end game content, so the master and grandmaster difficulty type stuff. Pointed Inquiry is part of one of the slowest firing scout rifle families in the game, but the upside to this is that these things usually can hit like a truck. 
The build for this weapon is centered around the idea of sitting in the very back of a map and plinking away at whatever you have your sights on. The role you'll want for this build is, in the first column, polygonal rifling, in the second column, appended mag, in the third column, fourth times the charm, and in the fourth column, focused fury. Polygonal will help make the stability a little bit better than what the weapon naturally comes with, and with this gun being used at range all the time, you'll be glad you have a bit of a bump in that category. Appended mag will increase the magazine size of this thing to 15 rounds, which helps the fourth times the charm trait out a lot. Fourth times the charm will return two bullets to your magazine for free for every four rapid precision hits you get, which essentially extends your magazine size as you shoot. Finally, Focused Fury will increase your bullet damage by 20% for 11 seconds if you land half of the magazine as precision hits. So out of your magazine of 15, you'll need to land eight precision hits. The plus side to this perk is that it lasts for as long as the timer is up. And if you happen to reload and land eight more precision hits, that timer then resets. Like I said before, this is a weapon you can sit in the back of a room and just whittle a boss's health away. Adding to that and its use during high level content, this gun also comes with the origin trait of Psycho Hack because it comes from the throne world. With Psycho Hack, if you keep damage sustained on a target, that target then dishes out reduced damage for a time. This scout rifle has the potential to make difficult encounters during GMs a bit easier by giving you the option to just sit back and chip down the health on one of those tougher enemies without having to use your special or heavy ammo. If you have yet to get a decent damage dealing sniper rifle, this one will probably be the easiest one that you can get. The Sniper Thoughtless has probably one of the better perk pulls that can roll on a sniper in the entire game, and I mean that for PvE and PvP, though I know that's arguable and subjective and, you know, that sort of thing. The only downside to it is that it's an adaptive frame sniper instead of an aggressive frame, but what it lacks in damage per shot, it makes up for in its damage dealing trait diversity. Let me explain. In the first column, you will want Fluted Barrel. In the second column, you'll want Flared Magwell. In the third column, you'll want Overflow, and in the fourth column, you will either want Firing Line or Focused Fury. Fluted Barrel adds 13 points to your handling stat, and for those of you who don't know what handling governs in the game, that's how quickly you can swap to and off that particular weapon. So, higher handling means that you can get the gun out quicker. Flared Magwell will give you a bump to stability and reload speed. And now before I go any further, in case you haven't seen my video on sniper rifles, the range stat on snipers is almost negligible since the effective range on snipers is usually pretty far as is, unless you're using a rapid fire frame variant of a sniper. Because that's the case, we want traits on this gun that improve everything else, which is why I chose the barrel and magazine, especially, you know, handling for those of you who like to quick swap from your sniper to a rocket launcher and then back to your sniper again to do all that bonus damage. Yeah, that's why we want handling. In your third column, you will want overflow, which will double your magazine capacity when you pick up either a special or heavy brick of ammo. That's no brainer. Now finally in your fourth column, you have the two separate options that basically do the same thing but are very different in how you get them to activate. Firing line is a trait that increases your weapon's damage by 20% whenever you're standing next to at least two other allies. For raids, seasonal activities, and other things, this is great and super easy to pull off because most times whenever you deal damage to a boss during a damage phase, you're more often than not going to be extremely close to your teammates. The second option in the fourth column is Focused Fury. I told you what it does on Pointed Inquiry, and it's no different here. Hit half of the magazine's shots as crits, and you deal 20% more precision damage. The thing you have to think about is this. In theory, you'll have Overflow activated on your Thoughtless, which gives the magazine a max total of eight rounds in the magazine. The beauty of Focused Fury is that you only have to hit half of the original magazine size as crits in order to get the buff. For Thoughtless, the original mag size is four. Half of four is two. So as long as you hit two out of those eight shots as crits, you activate Focused Fury for that bonus damage, which for most people is usually on your first two shots. 
I, I hope I explained that clearly enough. I, I can't get any clearer, or at least I don't think I can. But with all of that in mind, both Firing Line and Focus Fury have their uses in different ways that they are activated. Overall, I'd say Firing Line is more useful in raids and activities where you're playing with tons of allies, where Focus Fury is better whenever you're solo or doing any sort of nightfall strikes. With this next weapon, I want to be completely honest and transparent. This is one of probably my weaker points whenever it comes to Destiny, and that is bows. Under Your Skin is a bow that I think could be extremely helpful when it comes to slaying out lower ranked enemies and if bows happen to have any sort of champion mods on them. For the most part, I have a single trait you'll want in each column except for the fourth, so listen to this. To my understanding, for bows, the overall things you want are reduced draw time and accuracy. So, in the first column, you'll want Polymer String. In the second column, you'll want Straight Fletching. In the third column, you'll want Archer's Tempo. And in the fourth column, you have a choice between Successful Warm-Up and Explosive Head. Polymer String ends up increasing a bow's accuracy as well as decreasing its draw time, which is 100% what we want. Adding to that, Straight Fletching increases your accuracy, which should put under your skin into the 90s in terms of accuracy. The third trait being Archer's Tempo will decrease your draw speed as you land precision hits, not kills. Now, there's a big difference in how the perks in the fourth column could work. Successful warm-up is 100% a trait that will work much better for clearing lower rank enemies than big guys who need stun like champions or anything else. Successful warm-up decreases your draw time for each final blow. Meaning once you start killing with this bow, you'll be able to continue doing so at a wicked fast pace. And since bows are almost a one shot precision hit to a lot of red bar enemies, you can make short work out of a whole entire group of acolytes. Explosive head on the other hand works better in aspects of the game like stunning champions or dealing damage from a longer range. Overall, explosive head has a natural ability that splits the damage of a bow shot in two. Half of the damage is from the arrow itself, and the other half is from the exploding part. The plus side to this is that the explosion part of your shots has no damage fall off, so every shot you land is guaranteed to deal at the very least 50% of the max damage an arrow can dish out, hence why it's good for distance fights. For stunning champions, any of those explosive traits like explosive head or explosive payload will always be really good at stunning champions faster than regular rounds. Sometimes it's because one hit counts as two and other times it's because of the damage you can dish out because of the zero damage fall off. Either way, this is a really good bow that you can craft without having to sit around and just wait for one to land in your lap because of RNG. The last weapon I want to talk about is a rocket launcher with one of the best trait pulls in the game currently. And since you can craft one yourself, I highly suggest doing so ASAP. Palmyra B is a rocket launcher that has tracking rounds built into the weapon. The only downside to this is because that is the case, it does do less overall damage compared to an aggressive frame rocket launcher. However, like I said, the trait combinations you can make for this thing are pretty nuts. And because I've already given you a few weapons to use for crowd control, this is going to be all DPS. In the first column, you'll want quick launch. In the second column, you will want impact casing. The third column, you have a choice between auto loading holster and impulse amplifier. In the fourth column, you will have lasting impression and explosive light. And finally, the masterwork, you're gonna to wanna to go for velocity. As something to note for rocket launchers or any sort of launchers in general, velocity not only determines how fast the projectile moves from the gun, but it also increases the damage done by a shot on a direct hit. With that in mind, Quick launch raises your velocity and your handling, which makes for fast rockets, higher impact damage, and faster swaps. Impact casing increases your impact damage even further because that's specifically what the trait does. Stability boost is just a side note. Now, in your third column, the two options I gave you are going to be dealer's choice and what you want to do. Auto loading holster is a great trait to be able to quickly swap to Palmyra, fire a shot, put Palmyra away, do some damage with another weapon, and then swap back to Palmyra and fire again. An easy strat if you're trying to deal damage with a rocket and a sniper rifle, like, you know, thoughtless. 
Impulse Amplifier, on the other hand, is going to be far better if you want to try and squeak out as much damage as you want or as you possibly can with a single rocket. What Impulse does is increase your rocket's velocity, which increases the impact damage of said rocket, as well as increases your reload speed. Like I said before, the higher your velocity, the more impact damage you do with your rocket. For the fourth column options, being lasting impression and explosive light means this is all about damage. Explosive light increases the amount of damage you do per rocket whenever you pick up an orb of power. This effect is capped at six stacks, so for each stack you deal 25% more damage. The alternative to this, being lasting impression, allows your rockets to stick to surfaces for a short duration, yes, even to enemies, and then explodes dealing 20% more damage. Looking at the two of them, explosive light gives you the better damage dealing potential, but weigh their pros and cons. Explosive light requires you to first pick up an orb of power to be able to dish out that damage, so if your team isn't producing orbs, you're shit out of luck. Lasting impression doesn't require that sort of thing, but because there's a delay on the rocket explosion, if a boss or an enemy that you're fighting is mobile, they could easily rush you and make you kill yourself with your own rocket. So I will have you make the call. Either way, both of these traits do very good at dishing out the damage you need. Something else I forgot to mention. If you happen to be using explosive light on Palmyra and happen to be in the fire team with somebody using Galahorn, Whenever you use Galahorn, or anybody who uses Galahorn, usually gives everybody around them Pack Hunter, which means anybody who has a legendary rocket launcher to use has Wolf Pack rounds automatically. Explosive Light's 25% damage increase also affects the Wolf Pack rounds that are given you from Pack Hunter. So it's even more damage on top of what you're already getting. It's pretty nuts. That's it. That's the last weapon I got. Remember, you have a few different things to think about, like which perks will do well for you in the situation you're in, because not every god roll is good in every scenario. Keep that in mind when you craft your own rolls and, you know, making your own builds. It's good to know both the strengths and weaknesses of what you're using so that you can use it better. But that's all for me for today, guys. Thank you for coming to class. I'll see you all next time. And remember to keep your heads up and be kind to each other. Bye now.